In this video, we explore how to write all of the possible inputs and outputs for a logic gate using truth tables. And we also take a look at more complex circuits. There can only be two possible inputs if we've got a single input, and that's a zero and a one. We know that if we input a zero, that the output is one. And if we input a one, the output is zero. So that's the truth table for a NOT gate, showing all the possible inputs and outputs. Now with an AND gate, we've got two possible inputs. So we've got two columns here called A and B. And that means we need more rows in our truth table because there's more combinations. We could input two zeros, a zero and a one, a one and a zero, or two ones. And the final column is the output, which is the result of A and B. So if you remember, with an AND gate, both the inputs, A and B, need to be one, for the output to be one. So in this row, the output would be zero. In this row, the output would be zero. In this row, the output would be zero. But in the final situation where both A and B are one, the output would be one. In a similar fashion, the OR gate has two inputs. So we've got two columns for A and B and four possible combinations. Remember with an OR gate, only one of the inputs needs to be on or one for the output to be one. So in the first row, they're both zero, so the output is zero. In the second one, the output is one because at least one of the inputs is a one. The same is true for the third row and for the fourth row. Finally, let's look at the truth table for an XOR gate or exclusive OR gate. Now this is the one that students often make mistakes with because it's very similar to an OR gate truth table. So we've copied that one and left it on the left hand side. So to start with is exactly the same. If both the inputs are zero, the output is zero. If one of the inputs is one, like B, then the output is one. In a similar way, if A is one and B is zero, then the output is one. So, so far, this is identical to an OR gate. It's this final state where it differs. With an XOR gate, if both inputs are one, then the output this time is zero. Whereas with a normal OR gate, it would still be one. So let's get a little bit more complicated now. So here we have two logic gates joined together in sequence. We have an OR gate, and then the output from the OR gate is fed into one of the inputs of an AND gate along with another input. Now, although this can sometimes look daunting at first, it's no more complicated. The first thing to note is we have three inputs now, A, B and C. So I've got three columns there, but I've got two outputs. I've got the output from the OR gate, which is A or B, and we're gonna call that D in green. And then we've got the output from the final AND gate, which is the result of A or B and the new input from C. So effectively here, I've got five columns. Now, the first thing to do is write all the possible combinations for the three original inputs, A, B and C. And the best thing to do here is simply to count up in binary. So you can see I've got naught in the first row, followed by one in the second row, then a two, three, four, five, six, 
and then 7. So we've gone all the way from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, counting up in binary, so I can be sure that I've got all the possible valid combinations. So the first thing I do is just deal with one gate on isolation, and it's best to start from the left hand side. So ignore the AND gate completely. We're just dealing with A and B being our inputs and D being our output. This is an OR gate, so either A or B can be 1 and our output D will be 1. So in these two rows, the output 0. In these two rows, B is 1, so that's fine, the output's 1. In these two rows, A is 1, so the output's 1. And in these two rows, A and B are both 1, that's fine for an OR gate, so the output's 1. We're now done with the OR gate, so we can proceed to the AND gate. So our AND gate has two inputs. It has input C and input D, which is effectively the output from the OR gate that we worked out just now. And remember, with an AND gate, both inputs C and D need to be 1 for the output E to be 1. So we have 0 and 0, so that would be a 0. 1 and 0 would be a 0. 0 and 1 would be a 0. 1 and 1, both inputs being a 1, means the output E is a 1. Then we have 0, another 1, a 0, and a 1. So although at first it can look a bit daunting, if you break it down step by step, it really is quite straightforward. So just as a quick recap, here are the four logic gate symbols that you need to know about for the GCC exam, along with their associated truth tables. Thank you.